towards the Iraqi border. We were going to be going to Teshudu, where we could take a ferry to Lebanon, but the price of the ferry we just decided was um, too excessive. So we can ride around by going through Iraq. So that's the option we've decided we're going to take. This is Azra's first day riding uh, since we're well, since we picked her up back in December, but that, that doesn't really count because I'm sure she doesn't remember that. We hardly remember it. And she's done 100 kilometers and she's doing really well. She's riding with Shadow. There's her nose. There's the Azra nose. She's being a very, very good girl. And there's Shadow. Can you see Shadow? There's Shadow. In there somewhere. Uh, so they're on Stu's bike and Weedy is on my bike. So this should be our uh, Azra last night in Turkey uh, because tomorrow we're going to try to cross the border into Iraq. So we're having a lovely traditional Turkish meal. This is pide over here. We ask for the vegetarian. You get salads on the side. And this was recommended to us today. This is from this region. And we were told that doesn't matter what you get, red, white, expensive, cheap, it's all going to be good. Approaching the Iraq border were insane. We may have taken the wrong road, but luckily we were able to weave around them for 15 kilometers and made it to the border post without anyone yelling at us. The actual border crossing was straightforward, but painfully slow on both sides. The whole process took us around six hours and it was dark and we were tired as we rode into Iraqi Kurdistan. We've set up our tent on the other side of those trucks. Big car park, and over there we've got supermarket on the left and a nice restaurant on the right where we had dinner. Worked out really well. So, yeah, and then we'll hit the road into Kurdistan first thing in the morning. We'll be really excited. How do you feel, Azra? Oh, she's so excited. This is our setup. We need to be cheaty. Excited. Everyone's excited. Motorbikes in front of our tent. Deliberately put the motorbikes in front in case a truck decides to back up into our tent while we're asleep. They'll have to take out the bikes first, which they may do. But at least we'll get a little bit of a warning. As has already had a go at the truck drivers, they got out of their cabs to say hello and Azra wasn't happy with it. How are you feeling Janelle? Really tired, can't wait to get into the tent. We made it through our first night in Iraq. Got some excellent pet friendly accommodation. We're in a car park. <laughs> Azra's decided, oh my god I look terrible, I'm so tired. Azra's decided that it's time for everyone to get up. Just as I pull the camera out, Stop being annoying. <laughs> oh, Azra. Oh, what's our plan today, Stu? Ugh, plan is to ride to Starbucks. Oh. Ten kilometers away. Oh, I really hope they have oat milk. That would make me so happy right now. <laughs> Work out. Where find somewhere in Mosul and ride there. It's 130 k's, but. Just find a hotel where we can go and get a good night's sleep. It's pretty shattered. This car park had flood lighting. <laughs> and <laughs> I woke up at about, it was about two in the morning, and I said, oh, Stu, I think we should get up and get moving. It's date. <laughs> Check the bike, <laughs> it's two o'clock in the morning. Oh, so everyone out, everyone went out for a toilet break and went back to bed. We've just been turned away from the road to Mosul. We um, we don't have the Iraq stamp, we have the Kurdistan stamp and they don't recognise that in 
the rest of Iraq. So we thought actually we were going to be okay getting to Mosul, but it turns out we were wrong. Um, we went through four checkpoints, and the last checkpoint they told us, no, you have to go back. Every other checkpoint just looked at our passports and sent us on, so now we're heading back. We entered Kurdistan on the 21st of March, which also happened to be the day of a 5,000 year old public holiday in Kurdistan that celebrated the spring equinox. We'd been turned away from the Mosul border and being the last day of the long weekend, the roads were crazy with people heading home. Nobody were following the road rules and we were run off the road a number of times by cars and trucks coming in the opposite direction. As it started to get dark, we made the decision that we'd find somewhere to camp for the night. Set up camp just outside this restaurant last night. A little bit noisy with the constant truck traffic going by. It wasn't the plan to be camping here last night. We were supposed to be staying with someone in Mosul, but we got stopped 30 kilometers from the city of Mosul at a checkpoint and turned around. Officially, they don't recognize Kurdistan, so they wouldn't let us pass. They said we need to have an Iraq stamp or we're illegal in Iraq. So we really had no idea what to do and we contacted the bikers in Baghdad. They've got uh, members up here in Kurdistan. So they are a nationwide biker club and they, um, they told us that they'll take care of us. They'll make sure everything's sorted. What we can do is fly from Erbil to Baghdad get the Iraq stamp in our passports and then go uh, drive back, take the bus or get back to um, Erbil uh, overland and we will then be able to come south with the passports. The Iraq bikers have met us in the capital of Kurdistan in, um, in Erbil. They've just met us, we just arrived today and they're gonna, I think, help us out. So it was a really nice warm reception. Yeah. some bikers as they uh, organized for us to get a flight to Baghdad out of Kurdistan and into southern Iraq. We had to put the girls, take the girls to a clinic, a vet clinic, so that they just for um, kenneling for the night because we're going to be away for tonight and we are now getting on a plane and flying to Baghdad. It just it's really it's a bit crazy but so the bikers are pretty keen to get us sorted get us get this stamp as quickly as possible because there's a bike festival down in Baghdad this weekend and they're all leaving on Thursday today's Tuesday so we'll fly down get our stamp and we'll get a drive back uh, tomorrow being Wednesday spend one night here and then we're all riding down as a well, with the club on Thursday so yeah, it um, should be awesome experience, but um, yeah, right now it's feeling really overwhelming. We're back at the airport in Erbil, the capital of Kurdish Iraq. After a pretty epic fail last night, we got to the airport with just uh, enough time to check in. To check in and we went to the process it just took forever and by the time we got to the immigration desk we were looking okay but immigration held us because we had our motorbikes in the passport and they didn't understand why we were leaving them here and needed to check some stuff some emails had to be sent uh, it just took forever they had to contact the border and make sure that everything we were doing was all right so um, they waited for an email from the border and it, they just weren't responding. So by the time they actually released us, everything was fine. They stamped us through. We ran to our gate, but the gate closed. I don't see how it was out for, but anyway, we ended up having to buy tickets again today. They wouldn't budge on that. But we've gone from one extreme to the other. So we definitely didn't want to be late today. So we got to the airport four hours before our flight and now the flight's delayed two hours. <laughs> we are through immigration. Today is definitely a better day. Right. Celebrating the little things in life. Cheers. Cheers.
Our second attempt at reaching Baghdad went smoothly. We got our Iraq visa at Baghdad Airport around 3 a.m. Ahmed from Iraq Bikers was waiting for us and he drove us out of the city to where we got into a shared taxi, all organized and waiting for us. The taxi drove us the four hours back to Erbil. Um, Jaeger, another Iraq biker, picked us up in Erbil with our dogs and took us to our hotel where we ate and then slept. Next morning, we were on the road at 4.20 a.m riding to Baghdad for the big motorcycle event. bikers, the last day of their festival, uh, huge amount of bikes, really impressive, uh, running about 100 kilometers today, maybe a little bit more, to Babylon, city of Babylon, uh, apparently the oldest city in the world, so it'll be really, uh, really, really interesting, it'll be a lovely ride, yeah, I'll be looking forward to it. Just finishing up a uh, weekend at, with the Iraq bikers. The Iraq bikers had their 10 year anniversary, so a big festival. And behind me, you can see, so over my shoulder, is Saddam Hussein's palace. We haven't had a look inside. It is a, a tourist attraction. I think it's a, a hotel. There's supposed there's a, a really large swimming pool and um, really ornate rooms. Unfortunately, we're not going to have much time to see Babylon. We're going to move on and head towards Jordan, our next destination. How are you, Weedy? You ready for it? Janelle's just preparing Shadow and Azra. We've got just 200 kilometers today. <laughs> Right. Not taking too kindly to horse and carriage. From Babylon, we rode 200 kilometers to Ramadi. Ramadi is a city that was flattened by ISIS, but in the five years since, there's been an awful lot of investment in Ramadi. Ramadi quickly became our favorite city in Iraq due to its thoughtful design and the scenic location. The Ambar chapter of Iraq bikers met us on the outskirts and escorted us into the city and to the home of Ali. Ali was one of the bikers who'd offered to host us for our two night stay in Ramadi. Staying with Ali and his family was the highlight of our stay in Iraq and a memory we will never forget. We're just leaving Ramadi in central-ish Iraq, heading to Ratba in the west. It's just all desert from here to Ratba. No services, uh, so we've made sure the tanks are all full and uh, we're just going to see nothing but sand. Looming out there in the desert is still the shadows of ISIS, so it's a, it's a dangerous stretch of road. But the military have a massive presence here. For every 100 metres there's been a soldier stationed. Don't know if that'll be maintained the whole way. Uh, they only work until 4 p.m. though, so we've been told if we can't get there by 4, the road becomes unsafe. We were supposed to be going to Ratbar, 
but uh, there was some ISIS activity on the road today. Don't know exactly what, but um, the military have escorted us since 50 kilometers before Rakhba, and um, now I want to take us all the way to the Jordanian border. What are you thinking, Janelle? Oh, I'm thinking I was done with riding. It's half an hour ago, so it's ready to shadow.